A countrywide state of emergency is in place across Georgia for the next 15 days. It was decreed by Georgian President Mikhail Saakashvili following clashes between protesters and police in the capital, Tbilisi. All independent TV and radio news has been suspended, with only the state broadcaster still operating normally. Classes have been cancelled in Tbilisi schools and universities until Monday. Our correspondent Katerina Azarova is following the developments in the Georgian capital. It seems that everything is quiet. There is a lot of heavy traffic as a lot of the roads are closed off, including the central Rustaveli Boulevard, which is where the Georgian Parliament building is, and most of the violence took place yesterday. It is still very quiet. However, it was also very quiet, just like it is here now, yesterday, when the protests were taking place, and everything changed so quickly that it's difficult to predict whether today will, in fact, remain calm and quiet, or whether any outbreaks will take place. After Mikhail Saakashvili declared the state of emergency, he officially uh, forbade uh, any TV uh, in independent and TV radio broadcast to be held uh, for the next 15 days. The only channel that is broadcasting and allowed to broadcast news is the national Georgian television. Uh, all the other TV channels that are still on air are broadcasting movies, documentaries, and uh, nothing news related. National Georgian Television did show a news broadcast this morning. Uh, they gave details of the uh, state of emergency laws that are applied, that are in place, uh, specifically concerning the work of TV and radio stations, also detailing uh, the facts of the, the general day-to-day -day life uh, of Georgia for the next 15 days. School are closed for the next few days and uh uh, there is no, uh, all the meetings, public gatherings and demonstrations are also forbidden under this state of emergency law that Mikhail Saakashvili introduced last night. The opposition uh, did say that they have asked people not to take to the streets of Tbilisi today in order to avoid violence and bloodshed. It may well be that the people are so uh, outraged by the inconsistency of the policies of Mikhail Saakashvili that they will return to the streets. Katerina Azarova there reporting. Georgia is close to a serious human rights crisis. That's according to Russia's foreign ministry, as our correspondent Alexander Koshanitska now reports. Mikhail Kamin, right, when he came out to press, uh, we could tell that he was really emotional with his speech and everything. He said he sometimes used some rather harsh uh, and strong words. And uh, he said uh, certainly that everything that is happening in Georgia right now is the responsibility of the current government, of the president, and the accusations against Russia is just uh, an example of inability of the current government to cope with the inner situation in the country. He also called for international organizations to demand the cease of violence in Georgia. We are very concerned about the development of events in Tbilisi. We consider that the introduction of state of emergency confirms the inability of the Georgian leadership to resolve their own problems in a civilized manner. We consider that Georgia is coming to the situation of an acute human rights crisis. The footage from Tbilisi that we saw vividly demonstrates what democracy a la Georgia is. It's a violent dispersal of peaceful demonstrations, closure of mass media, and beating up of foreign journalists. Two Russian correspondents were injured. We demand that the Georgian authorities investigate this and punish the guilty. We once again declare that Russia is not an enemy, but a friend of Georgia. We shall continue to fulfill our obligations in resolving the Georgian Abkhazian and Georgian Ossetian conflicts. The Georgian ambassador to Russia is expected to leave Moscow by midnight on Thursday. Meanwhile, security around the Georgian embassy in Moscow has been stepped up in light of recent events. The police placed additional posts in the streets next to the embassy in case of protest by the Georgian diaspora in the Russian capital. The state of emergency in Georgia may only last two days if it stays calm. That's according to the vice speaker of the country's parliament. On Wednesday, hundreds of people clashed with police on the streets of Tbilisi. Yekaterina Karasova reports. Over 500 people injured and a state of emergency in place. The consequence of clashes on the streets of Tbilisi. Opposition protesters have been camping outside the Georgian parliament since Friday, demanding early elections and the resignation of President Mikhail Saakashvili. On Wednesday, riot police started to break up opposition rallies using tear gas and water cannon. 
The forces were accused of indiscriminately attacking anyone in their path, regardless of age or gender. The government is not reacting. government is responding on people's demands with uh, tear gas and with the, using the, the gangsters, the people who don't even show their faces. Human rights groups expressed grave concern over the use of force against demonstrators. Journalists were also among those injured. The Georgian government also ordered all independent TV and radio news be suspended, with only the state broadcaster still operating normally. Transmission at the Imedi TV station stopped after police entered its headquarters live on air. We hope that we are watched not only in Georgia, but also in the embassies. Here in the building there is the president of Amedi, Lewis Robertson, who has been captured by the police forces. Also, there is search on the third floor and all employees on the ground floor lying with their faces down. I don't know what is going on outside. I don't know what is going on in the control room. Is anybody hearing me? We are in a very difficult situation. We are not warned that police will come into the building. By closing the channel, the government is violating the constitution. This means that this is a dictatorship regime. I address to all organizations and embassies to protect the citizens. Here they are coming into the studio. I want to say thank you. I hear shouts in the control room. I hope our employers won't be injured. Here are our guests. It was not until the evening that the Georgian president appeared on television to address the nation. He blamed outsiders for the situation, pointing at Russia and ordering the expulsion of three Russian diplomats. Evil forces are at work from a country that has great experience in this. But those who would like to destabilize our country have no chance. While Russia has practically annexed Abkhazia and the Tsikhinvali region, to allow massive clashes in Georgia is to threaten its existence. The time for demonstrations and counter-demonstrations is over. We will allow no more violence, but we will also not allow the special services of another country to undermine Georgia. The accusations didn't go unnoticed in Moscow. The Kremlin labeled President Saakashvili's allegations of Moscow's involvement as anti-Russian hysteria. The Russian Foreign Ministry called it an irresponsible political provocation that would get an adequate answer. The Russian State Duma chairman, Boris Grzlov, said Georgia's accusations were prompted by the U.S. secret services. The U.S. State Department said it has no information on claims that outside forces are trying to stir things up in Georgia. Of course, if that were, that, that were true, that would be something of concern not only to us, but I would expect of a special, a special concern to the Georgian government. Look, if there are political differences within the political system in Georgia, they, can, they should be, a, be worked out within the confines of that political system, and also they should be worked out in a, in a peaceful manner. The situation in Georgia has prompted a strong resonance across the international community. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe expressed concern over the events and called on the two sides to open talks based on democratic principles. The European Union said it hopes a solution will be found through negotiations. Despite strong calls for dialogue from the international community, it is now unclear whether the demonstrators will be willing to negotiate with the authorities.